Now, ten years ago today, we were three days into the Iraq war, and Britain suffered its first casualties. Six British soldiers were killed when two Royal Navy helicopters collided. It was the start of a long and, for many, unpopular conflict. Good evening. On day three of the war on Iraq, the devastating might of British and US forces secures a huge swathe of southern Iraq. American and British troops were advancing towards Basra, while back in Britain, anti-war protesters were marching in the streets. A decade on from the start of the war, when the troops were greeted by cheering crowds, what has become of the 120,000 British service personnel who served in Iraq? Many returned to their families unscathed, but others did not. Andy Davis has been hearing from three people whose lives were drastically changed by the war. I remember the day quite clear, it was 6 December 2006. We were pulling out of the area, and then as we pulled out, the driver couldn't see for all the dust. So I had to put my head out the top of the turret just to, to check it was clear for him. And, and literally, as I shouted, clear, go, and started to move back inside the vehicle, that's when I felt the smack on the side of my head. And then the whole world around me then just disappeared. So where did the bullet come on, on into this, your skull? On this angle, it came in this direction. And then this is the exit wound here. So as it went through, obviously it shattered this cheekbone. It uh, went all the way through, ripped out. It broke my jaw in four places, collapsed my palate, came out and, and ripped through uh, this side as well. So it destroyed my left eye completely, ripped the optic nerves off. It damaged the retina on my right eye. I've no sense of smell anymore. Uh, and I've got facial paralysis through there where there's no nerve endings. Simon Brown was a vehicle mechanic a corporal on his second tour of Iraq. He was shot by a sniper hiding in this building. He came round after 17 days in a medically induced coma. Someone just turned around and said, by the way, you're going to be blind. And um, my, my world fell apart. I thought about suicide. I, I thought at this point, you know, it was a point of carrying on. You know, I can't be what I was before. I can't be, I'm not going to be any use to anyone. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to carry on, and that, that's the hole I was in at that point, laid in that bed. But my dad, <laughs> he bought me a radio, because obviously everyone else was watching TV, and my dad bought me a radio, and, and I heard that two of my friends had been killed, and then that was the, the, the basically the kick I needed to say, look, you're still here. Um, I'm not going to abuse their memory by wasting the opportunity that I've got still being alive. I got up quite early and had gone down the stairs um, and switched the TV on. And it was the old sort of CFAX headlines. And I had read that there were three soldiers had been killed in Iraq and Basra. And my gut instinct just told me that that was it, one of those was Matt. The four military policemen were in a civilian car. Major Matt Titchener and three other British soldiers were ambushed in Basra in August 2003. They were travelling in this car when a pickup truck pulled up alongside them. At that point, the vehicle accelerated forward um, and managed to get in between Matt's vehicle and the second vehicle. And at that, they started, they opened fire um, and drove up alongside and they killed the driver and the vehicle crashed into a wall. Um, and from what I've been told, Matt was killed more or less outright. The, they riddled the side of the vehicle with um, bullets. So, um, there was one survivor. So, no. Yeah in that vehicle. <laughs> You're cold. It's good. Good fresh air. <laughs> Raquel, who lives in Ayrshire, became a war widow at 28. She was pregnant at the time with her daughter Angel. Matheson, too, when his father was killed, is hoping on this 10th anniversary of his death to be allowed to march past the Cenotaph on Remembrance Sunday. What are you going to be thinking about when you go down to London, what do you want to do when you go down? Um, well, I hope we can get in the parade and just feel proud of my dad. That's all. You're proud of your dad? Yeah. What do you think about the job your dad did? Good. Mm -hmm. But probably a terrifying job. And Raquel, what does this 10th anniversary mean to you? For me, I suppose, it's a, a bit of another hurdle because Matt and I were together 10 years and I've always dreaded that moment where he'll be gone longer than we were together. 
and that's something difficult as well to re think that you know he's been away from us for that length of time and we you know we're still moving him on and it, you know it's it's hard I don't regret anything I've done in the army at all even though it, even though it has made me mentally ill when I eventually came out I was like literally there's your bags drop where am I? What, what, what am I going to do? I've got to try and find a home. You've got to try and find a job. James Price was a Grenadier Guardsman at 16, a veteran by 23. These were the, uh, the medals I received for the, uh, the two tours. He left the army two years ago after tours of Iraq and Afghanistan. He was diagnosed at the time with post-traumatic stress disorder. I lost a lot of things, like my marriage broke down. I would look in the mirror and I just see a person. Don't know who that person was, but I just I just saw a person. Like it's like I know it's my I know it's me. I know it's my reflection. But I'm looking in the mirror, going, "One moment, who are you?" Ten years on from the invasion, what do you think about the fact that we went to war in Iraq? I think it's a pointless tour. Even before we were going out to Iraq, we all we'd all like being being in 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 the bar or something like that, and going, "Why are we going out there? What is the point of this war?" In the flat he shares with his girlfriend in Coventry, James, now 25, shows me the cooker bought for him last year by the Royal British Legion. The Legion bought him a carpet as well and gave him £200 worth of Sainsbury's vouchers. Unemployed still, but grateful to those who've helped his recovery. I thank them all and I love them all for how they've helped me. And I am mean, very grateful for what they've done for me over this past, um, say, two years of me struggling with um, everything that I've had to come across, really. Do you think it was worth it? I don't know, because it, it's history that judges our actions, and I hope it is, I hope it was worth it. My, my friend's lives paid for it, so I hope it is worth it. But... In the last seven years, Simon Brown's undergone 120 hours of surgery. Having volunteered with young offenders, he's now working once again full time. Membership officer and mentor at Blind Veterans UK, a charity whose logo he's proudly embossed on one of his 14 glass eyes. He talks of a life damaged by war, but enriched by the process which followed. I must admit, 10 years ago when we invaded Iraq, this was not, <laughs> this was not the plan. No, I didn't choose any of it, I didn't pick any of it to happen. But now, I, now I'm very proud of who I am, and, and I think, you know, in a way, I've probably achieved much more than I ever could have achieved had it not happened. You know, I'd have, I'd have stayed in that groove. And this has made me push myself and, and find out who I really am. There you go, the race to the car. Who do you think's gonna win? Me! <laughs> Last year, Raquel remarried. For her, the questioning of a war which deprived her of a husband and her children of a father serves little purpose. Remembrance, not regret, her focus 10 years on. I think if I was to go into all the rights or the wrongs and take all that on board, I just think you could become very bitter and you lose what really is important, and that is the fact that you have had such a wonderful person in your life, and I think to respect their memory, you, you need to focus and try and be positive. Take that. <laughs> the future, as far as I'm concerned, is, you know, if, get up every morning and have a life and smile and laugh, then I'm honouring Matt's memory and I'm doing what he wanted. And I'm setting for my kids um, a good life ahead. That report by Andy Davis on three experiences of the war in Iraq. And, of course, there are so many others. Major Matthew Titchener was one of 179 British service personnel killed in Iraq. Corporal Simon Brown was one of 222 who, as defined by the Ministry of Defence, suffered serious or very serious injuries. Many more suffered post-traumatic stress disorder, like James Price. One charity estimates there could be more than 8,000 cases relating to the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan together. The number of civilians killed in Iraq since 2003 is thought to be more than 110,000. After the break, we'll talk to a German MP about why his government has been so tough on Cyprus and... Dr Livingston. I presume. ..to boldly go 
where, 200 years after the birth of Livingstone, what's left for the modern-day explorer?